Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Luis Portales and for today's video, we have a brand new episode of Extraordinary Talks. Now, for today, I have a very special guest and judging by the title of this video, you know that I'm talking about Miss Marisa Butler, who is representing for the United States during Miss Earth 2021. Marisa was crowned Miss Earth USA in the month of January, and ever since she has become a fan favorite for the ongoing pageant of Miss Earth. However, this candidate has big shoes to fill since she is the successor of Lindsay Coffey, the reigning Miss Earth 2020. In order to find out if she has what it takes in order to pull this off, just keep watching the interview, which I really, really hope that you enjoy. If you do, don't forget to leave a like on the video so that it gets recommended to more people. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one almost every single day. And last but not least, let us know in the comments comment section what are your reactions to the entire interview all right my friends so without further ado i will meet you with marisa right after the intro Welcome once again to a brand new episode of Extra Ordinary Talks, everyone. And just like I promised, here I have my beautiful guest, Marisa Butler. <laughs> How is it going, my dear? Hello, Luis. I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. Honestly, such a pleasure to have you here with us. And I'm really excited about the conversation that, that we're going to have today. <laughs> So <laughs> before we start, I just wanted to compliment you because you look so beautiful. I love the colors. Oh, you look so fresh. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I figured I'd wear orange and uh, just to celebrate Halloween coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, it's very on brand. <laughs> so Marisa, before we start, so um, you are the, the reigning Miss Earth USA 2021. Uh, and obviously a lot of people within the pageant community have heard about you. So but how would you introduce yourself to someone who has no idea of who you are, who has never heard from you? Of course. So I always say that the legacy I want to leave as a title holder is the queen who really does the work. So for those of you who haven't got to know me before, I like to kind of talk a little bit about my advocacy work that I've been working on ever since I was a little girl. Yeah. So I used to rehabilitate animals with my mother, uh, sick, injured, orphan animals would help them with round the clock care for weeks at a time. So that's really where my love for Mother Earth really originated. Uh, I also tagged sharks in college as part of the NOAA's cooperative shark tagging program. And then now living in San Diego, I'm the leader of my own nonprofit organization called We Clean Trails, which is a cleanup organization that has removed over 10,000 pounds from San Diego since 2020. So I'm very proud of those accomplishments of my organization. And I really think that the most important thing to know about me is I'm the queen who's not afraid of hard work. I'm out there every single weekend with my community trying to make the world a better place. And so I think that's the most important thing to know about me if you haven't met me yet. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> As you were explaining all of that, I'm just, I was just thinking, oh my God, how has she managed to do so much in so little yeah. time? Because you're still so young. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I really thrive off of you know the busy schedules. Uh, right now, my schedule is very crazy, as you could imagine, <laughs> having to juggle my full-time job as a financial advisor, competing for Miss Earth, and then also leading my nonprofit organization. So there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of things that are pulling me in different directions, but I truly love that feeling because it gives you such a sense of accomplishment uh, to be able to check off so many boxes on your schedule every single week. Uh, so I definitely thrive under this pressure. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm, I'm really glad that you're able to to manage it. And also, you know, that you're doing so much because once again, it's incredible. Not only you're doing your, your daytime job, but also the pageant, your nonprofit. That's really remarkable. So good for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so how would you say that you have changed as a person ever since you were crowned uh, Miss Earth USA in January? Well, I think pageants in general has been very transformative for me. I've been in the pageant industry for 10 years. Yes. Um, I definitely think that pageants in general have given me a more strong voice and confidence in who I am as a person. And I think that's only been solidified uh, when I became Miss Earth USA. I really not only learned to have a voice, but how to use it to make real change in my community. Uh, so I think that it really gave me the courage to speak on the knowledge that I 
have regarding the environment and make real changes, uh, such as closing the beach of La Jolla uh, in San Diego, California during the seal and sea lion pupping season. I was part of the big push and legislature change for that. So I'm very proud and pleased of being able to learn how to use my voice for good. Yes, absolutely. So I wanted to ask you, um, as you mentioned before, this, you know, love for Mother Earth and, and the environment is something that you had with you ever since you were a kid, since your childhood. Um, when was the moment, when did you decide that you wanted to pursue uh, Miss Earth and that you wanted to give it a try? Of course. So Miss Earth has always been my end goal. Like I said, I've been in pageants for 10 years. I've been in a bunch of different systems. I think that it was after I competed at Miss USA, which is the Miss Universe organization system, that I really had a plan to compete for Miss Earth uh, because I really found that it fit who I was as a person better than any other pageant system. And the reason why I didn't go directly straight to Miss Earth was because my experience at Miss USA, I realized when I went, I was very young. I had a lot of growing up to do and to be able to be the person I wanted to be when I stepped on the Miss Earth stage, or in this case, our virtual stage that we're having this year. Um, so I knew I wanted to have more character development uh, to be able to work on my advocacy longer. So I decided to compete in a few other systems to have practice along the way so that I would be ready for this moment now, uh, because I didn't want to have that same feeling where I went too soon and I missed that opportunity to really shine and show my full potential. So Miss Earth has really been on my mind for a number of years now. And I purposely planned for it to be my last pageant that I will be doing. Uh, so I waited until I was almost aged out. So I had as much time as possible to prepare. And I'm so happy that I did because I think that I'm in the right place at the right time and in the right system to truly make an impact. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, you have worked so hard for this. So I'm, I'm just hoping for the best. And I don't want to sound biased, but like all the polls and all like the vloggers, everyone says that you're a fan favorite. So I'm oh, not worried thank about you. So you. Much. <laughs> I've been so overwhelmed with the support and love that I've been feeling from all over the world, uh, which has been really humbling. Uh, but it, this is the first time I've really felt this huge momentum behind me. So I really thank all the fans and all the pageant bloggers who are believing in me and on my journey to the Miss Earth crown. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, so you said that you have been thinking about Miss Earth for a while, right? It's something that you have, mm -hmm. that you say for last precisely because you look up to it so much. Uh, how do you feel about the pageant being virtual this year? You know, I think we always have to make the best of a bad situation. I really do applaud the Carousel Productions for really keeping the girls' health in mind when they're making this decision. Now, would I have loved to be able to go to the Philippines and be able to meet the amazing uh, fans there and meet the other <laughs> girls and contestants? Of course, I would love to have had that opportunity. But at the same time, I think that this really offers a unique opportunity for the viewers to be able to see some gorgeous places and locales within all the different countries. I really feel, at least if the other girls are doing what I'm doing and taking you along to different locations that are truly near and dear to my heart that I think are some of the most beautiful places in our country, then I think it's going to be a really amazing opportunity for fans to get to know the girls on a deeper level, yeah. uh, especially with the added of so many more media interviews and uh, live interviews that we're doing with the official Miss Earth organization itself. So I think that they will really get a chance to hear the girls speak, to get to know them personally on a deeper level, which I think is very uh, you know, admirable and different from other pageant systems. So I think our personalities really get a chance to shine through in this form Format, and I'm very excited about that opportunity. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I think it's such a beautiful message, you know, that although, uh, you know, we're going through the middle of the pandemic that we had to adjust, mm -hmm. uh, Miss Earth did not give up and they just, you yes. know, really pushed through it, thinking always of the safety of the candidates and making sure that they're still delivering what the fans want and what the organization mm -hmm. wants, but at the same time, keeping everyone, you know, safe and 
Of course. And I think the added bonus to this also, uh, for me at least, is since I do have my own nonprofit organization, I'm able to spend more time actually doing the work that I'm advocating for right here in my local community. And I think that that is something that's really important, especially with Miss Earth, the environmental focus. That's really giving us the opportunity to continue this work that we would have had to put on hold otherwise if we were you know, in a different country for five weeks at a time. So it, I just think that there is so much positives to think about it. I know we're all kind of upset that it's not in person, <laughs> but there's so many other positive outcomes from having it in this format. So that's what I've been trying to focus on. Yes, for sure. And I've been following you on social media for for quite some time now. And I always see your posts and your stories, always, you know, doing the work, really at it. So I'm really glad that, you know, at least something positive coming out of this experience is that you still get to do that and, you know, still help your community. Absolutely. And there's plenty of time for the Philippines. <laughs> so Of course. I no definitely want to go as soon as travel opens up again. Like I said, I've had such an outpouring of love and support, especially from the Filipino fans. And I'm so grateful for that. So I would love a chance to get to know their country, to travel. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. As soon as I can travel again, I'd love to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Manifesting it. It's going to happen. <laughs> So you have some pretty impressive pageant experience under your belt. So you did Miss USA back in 2016. Yes. Uh, you also did Miss World in 2018. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, <laughs> now you are joining, uh, I mean, now you are crowned uh, Miss Earth USA in 2021. So how would you say this experience with Miss Earth has been different from the previous pageants that you had? Well, like I said, this pageant really fits who I am as a person the most. So I've been able to feel like I've been truly able to be who I am unapologetically within this system. I feel like I never really fit the other systems quite right. As you know, Miss World is more humanitarian and I went in with an environmental advocacy to Miss World. So I knew, you know, Miss World wasn't going to be for me. They, they focus more, like I said, on humanitarian issues. Um, and, but I do think that that was such a wonderful growth experience for me plus I was able to meet my dearest friend in the world Vanessa during that process and I would never have traded that for anything in the world um, but I think that the thing that makes Miss Earth USA different from the other USA national competitions is truly its leadership team I am so fortunate to have Laura and her team behind me during this uh, run for Miss Earth because they are really the most supportive directors that I have ever had in my life. There, our whole board of directors is all women who have been former title holders themselves in various uh, systems across the board. So they really know what it's like to be a contestant. And so they are able to make sure that my experience is a very positive and seamless one. So I really appreciate the time, effort, and love that they've put into the system. And for me, that really has been the biggest difference competing in USA or World America to Miss Earth USA is just the strong and loving leadership team. Yes, absolutely. And when you think about it, right, it only makes sense that you already went through these experiences that you learned and you, you know, gained that knowledge and were able to build a network in order to then come to the pageant that you were always looking forward to, right? The one that, that is closest to your heart. Um, so yes, just hoping for the best and, you know, just bring your A game. You got this girl. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So earlier you were mentioning a little bit about your advocacy and everything that you have been doing, not only with the pageant, but also with your nonprofit. Um, what would you say are some of um, some ways that you will recommend for people to be part of the solution when it comes to, to your advocacy? Of course, I think that the most important thing is to have meaningful experiences within nature. So my advocacy is titled The Collective Earth, and it's really centered around this concept of having meaningful experiences within nature to be able to foster what I believe are the four vital values to saving Mother Earth, which would be love, empathy, respect, and accountability. Yes. So for me, like I personally learned love and empathy while working with my mother, rehabilitating those animals who depended on me to be able to help them survive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I really learned those lessons at a very young age. You know, working with the sharks, they taught me respect and how 
every single animal, whether you think that they are important or not, are so important to their ecosystems. Uh, and just to see what, what the difference would be if we did not have those animals in the ecosystem. And so I think it was very important. It taught me respect for every single animal's place within Mother Earth. Yeah. And then I think accountability is the last one that is the most important. You're taking all these, you know, love, respect, and empathy and putting it towards action mm -hmm. when you practice accountability. So for me, that's you know, scheduling time in my schedule every single week, every Saturday morning to go out and clean up my community and tackle the litter crisis that is in San Diego. So I think that by volunteering and working with nature, you're not only learning to love it, but you're also learning the importance of why we need to protect it and how we can do that. So I would encourage every single person to find an environmental organization near you and start to volunteer. You're gonna learn so much just from the volunteer leads. They always have such a wealth of knowledge and love for mother earth. And I think it's very important that we start volunteering young. My favorite is to have the little kids when they come to my cleanups. We have some of my volunteers are as young as four years old and they treat the cleanups like it's an Easter egg hunt and they get so excited. And the thing that really sticks out to me is usually these children, they'll come back to a second cleanup and they'll tell me, I started a cleanup in my neighborhood with my friends, or I did a project about this in school and I shared what I did that weekend with you. And so it's really showing that, you know, kids can get excited about nature if you expose them to actually helping Mother Earth at a young age. So that's really what the center focus of my advocacy is, is to really get people exposed to nature so they can fall in love with it. Because once you are in Mother Nature, it's almost impossible not to feel that love. So that's the most important thing that we can be doing to help preserve Mother Earth. Honestly, I have to give you props for that because I believe that the approach that you have is just perfect, right? Because um, a lot of times, you know, people um, just don't have the knowledge or they don't know how to approach these issues, how they can be part of the solution, right? We often get overwhelmed by the information up there, the headlines, and it just feels like there's really nothing that we can do to change the situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of people are not born in families or in a context that um, gives them like the resources or the knowledge for them to know how to act. So the fact that you're doing the work, but also being so open about it, spreading information and doing it in a way that it's inclusive for your community, for, for the children, just like you said, I mean, like those kids are gonna go out caring for it, for the environment. And that's how you build, you know, next generation of people who will look after the, the environment as well. So that's brilliant. I, I really have to applaud you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay. so. We were saying earlier this year that, of course, we're going to have a virtual pageant. And because of this, not only there are a lot of positive sides, like we mentioned, you know, like you get to see countries, <laughs> different countries uh, experience the pageant in a different way, but also you have to adapt. And this is kind of an open question because I know that there is no perfect answer, but <laughs> do you have a strategy on how do you plan to make sure that people on social media and people uh, get your message virtually? Because if you were there physically, it will be a different approach. But now that everything is in a virtual context, how do you prepare? Yes. Well, I think it all starts with what we're doing right here, right now. And mm -hmm. by taking on as many interview requests as possible, like I said before, my schedule is so crazy. But I'm making sure I make time for every single interview request that comes through. Because the way that we're really going to be getting our message across virtually in this pageant is by doing these interviews, not just by doing the bare minimum for what is required by Miss Earth, but by going above and beyond and getting our message out there. So, I mean, this week alone, I think I've done like six interviews. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's one of those things that I think is so important that you're showing you're going above and beyond to work for spreading the message of your advocacy across the world, especially in the virtual format. Like I said before, I love this 
fact because we get to get to know the girls so much better as long as they're embracing the virtual format uh, such as how I've been trying to do myself. Uh, I think that the thing that really always made me stand out within pageantry anyways has been my interview. So to be able to have that be public rather than behind closed doors and to do it not just once but a hundred times over, I think it really is going to be in my favor because that is where I feel that I thrive because my words is kind of the tool that I use to reach other audiences. Uh, and I know within my social media, you, you get a lot of photos and videos, but that doesn't tell you who I am as a person. So I think that these interviews are so important for you to get to know the candidates. So I really appreciate you inviting me on here today to give me another opportunity to do so. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's, it's always my pleasure, you know, to, to bring, you know, candidates that I believe in and present it to the audience. It's always, always a, an honor, <laughs> to say the least. So the reigning Miss Earth is Lindsay Coffey, which is yes. also from the USA. Um, do you think that these are big shoes to fill? Of course. I mean, Lindsay is an amazing queen. She's been a wonderful Miss Earth, especially during a global pandemic. She's been able to, like I said, go above and beyond to share her message, especially with her Eco Ed series that she's been doing. I think that's been so informative. She's such a great educator and has really stepped into that role as Miss Earth. And I couldn't be more proud of her as my predecessor of Miss Earth USA. Uh, so it is big shoes to fill. But I, like I always say, it's a different year. It's a different competition and back-to-back -back wins on this earth are not unheard of. I think that, you know, as long as I am showing up and giving the absolute best version of myself that I can, I will be proud with the outcome no matter what happens. Um, but yes, it's always, you know, <laughs> there's a little more eyes on me, of course, you know, trying to secure that back-to-back -back win for my country. But I'm trying to use that momentum to be able to really carry me through and, and stay motivated. I, I think it's actually been a wonderful motivator for me to be able to say, you know, if I'm going to do this, I don't only need to, you know, show up as if I was being able to be the winner, but to go above and beyond that. Because in order to have a back-to-back -back win, you really have to prove without a shadow of a doubt that you're the right woman for the job. Yes. And so I think that that's, like I said, big shoes to fill, but also a <laughs> wonderful motivator that's been keeping me on track. So I'm very appreciative of that fact. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, of course, each one of you uh, are representing a, a different country, but at the end of the day, at least if I was part of the judge and panel, I wouldn't necessarily look at the country itself, but what the candidate yeah. has to bring to the table, what they will add and the value that they will bring to the organization as well, and how they will, you know, align with the values of of uh, Miss Exactly. Barrett. You know, as Lindsay always says, be more than your country. And mm -hmm. I really have taken that advice to heart, especially trying to go for that back to back title and just realizing that I'm competing to be Miss Earth and I'm not just competing to be Miss Earth USA. Yes. So that country aspect is not the only thing that I'm trying to showcase. I'm trying to showcase that I'd be a good representative for the entire Earth. So I, I think, like you said, it, it's not really necessarily the country that you come from but the message you have to share with the world um, and I just hope that my message comes across clear and that no matter what happens as far as my placement that I'm able to make a positive impact and use my voice for good uh, and so thank you uh, again for having the opportunity to just share my voice with the world right now so yes for sure. I actually met uh, Lindsay a few weeks ago, uh, virtually, we had a, an interview as well. And she was just like the most, first of all, stunning person ever, like she was so beautiful, but also like, so, like, so kind, so open, so down to earth. <laughs> No pun intended. <laughs> I was so stressed. I was super like shaking before I met her, but she was like, so, oh. so definitely. <laughs> she's so sweet. There's no reason to be nervous <laughs> talking to her. Like you said, she's very, very down to earth, very easy to talk to. And like I said before, I just really admire her ability to be such an amazing educator yes. and a real representative for Mother Earth. So I'm oh. very proud of her to be. Uh, she was the first Earth USA contestant to have won the Miss Earth crown. And there is no shadow of doubt in my mind that she was going to walk away with that crown last year after watching the competition. <laughs> she just completely blew everyone away. And, and she was strong throughout the entire duration. And has been a wonderful representative since then. 
Absolutely. If you're watching, mm-hmm. Lindsay, we're sending you love. <laughs> <laughs> so in your opinion, what is something that you still need to work on for the competition and something that you know that you excel at? Of course. I think the biggest hurdle I've had has been my catwalk. You know, I, I think that uh, it's actually a wonderful that it's in a virtual format because I'm much more comfortable in front of the camera than I am necessarily on stage. So I think that almost worked a little bit in my favor. Um, it's just more in my wheelhouse. I, I do a lot more modeling in front of videos, uh, videographers and working with them in my day to day life than I would be up on a stage. So I, I think that that actually was a really beneficial uh, part for me going to the pageant. I think the strongest part of my competition, like I said before, has been the fact that I am very comfortable with using my voice to share my advocacy and my story. I really love to be able to do all these interviews and especially that it's not just behind closed doors, but that I get to share my voice with the earth by doing it virtually and having all of our interviews being live. So I really love that fact about Miss Earth this year. uh, And I definitely think that that was a strong seed for me. Yes. Amazing. And if I was to ask you, if you were given the chance to become the next Miss Earth 2021, uh, what do you think will set you apart from previous title holders? Well, like I said, the legacy I've always wanted to leave is the queen that does the work. I do the nitty gritty work (laughs) within my organization. You know, I'm out there moving thousands of pounds of trash. I am out there uh, removing invasive plants, actually hands-on working with animals. And so I really want to highlight that work that I'm doing in my community. I'm not here just to be a pageant queen. I'm not here to be a pretty face or a model. I'm here to be a real advocate for Mother Earth. And I think that's really what sets me aside uh, is the actual hours and time that I've spent in my community making a real difference. And that wouldn't change at all going into Miss Earth. I'd want to be able to branch out my advocacies, not only for my local communities, but all across the world and be able to work with communities hand in hand to truly make a real impact through service on Mother Earth. Amazing. Oh, I love that. (laughs) One more question for you before the end of the interview. So for the people watching you right now, for everyone who has been, uh, who stayed with us until the end of the interview, what is the best way for the audience to support you on your journey? And where can they find you as well on social media? Of course. Thank you everyone for watching today. I really appreciate your support. If you want to help me along my way with the Miss Earth journey, please like, share, and comment on all the Miss Earth organizations, Facebook posts about me. And then also you can find me on Instagram at Marissa Page Butler and at Miss Earth USA. If you want to follow along with my nonprofit organization, you can find it at We Clean Trails. Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to speak with you all today and to share my story. And thank you, Louis, for inviting me. I truly appreciate this opportunity. Oh, honestly, the pleasure is all mine. And, you know, I already loved you before I even started the interview, but I'm living, honestly, just in awe of you as a person for everything that you do, not only as a beauty queen, but everything that you have been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. Once again, it's truly remarkable. Uh, If there's anything, (laughs) absolutely. If there is anything that I can do ever to like help you, encourage you, whatever, you know that I'm just one message away. Okay. Appreciate (laughs) it. Perfect. All right, everyone. Well, thank you once again for joining us for this episode of Extraordinary Talks. I will see you very, very soon with another one. Until then, stay safe and take care of one another. (laughs) Bye, everyone.